Recently, there was a tweet about a fellow who didn't get a job at Google because he couldn't reverse a binary tree. I'm not going to claim that I'm perfect at getting a job at Google. In fact, I have interviewed there and have not gotten a job there. So, But anyway, I'd like to look at that problem and dive into how I would attack that with Python. So I'm going to just open up my editor here. I'll make a Python file called tree. Emacs is going to load up. So for those who aren't familiar, a binary tree looks something like this, where you have a node and as, you know, one or two or zero children. And so they basically, the problem was to take this note tree and convert it into something like this, where you reverse it, you take all the children and you flip it around so it looks something like that. So let's do that in Python. Now if I was in an interview and I had my laptop, that would be nice rather than whiteboarding. I'd do something like this. This is Python 2, so I'm going to subclass, I'm going to make a class here and subclass from object. And my constructor will take some value and a left node and a right node, and it will assign the value to val. Let's default L and R to none. So it can take a node, it can default none. L dot L equals L, so that's the left node if we have one, and a right node equals R. Okay, so here's a simple node. Let's make a test case. I'm going to use a feature called doc test. What I do is I write inside of a documentation string code that looks like a Python interpreter. So I'm going to make a node call with a value of one in it. We'll make another one, two, and as node two, we'll make another one called three, and it's node three. Let's hook them up into a structure. So I'm going to say n.l equals two. So two sitting on the left side of the root, and we'll say, 2.r equals 3. Okay, there's a simple node, and we should have some reverse function that takes a node and reverses it. There's some, if I'm doing test different development, there's some testing code. Let's actually run the test here. I'm going to put this code down here. So if I'm executing this file, I'm going to import the doc test, which is a built-in module, and I'll call doc test mod, which looks, when that's executed, it's gonna look in this file for any documentation strings, anything that looks like it's an interpreter snippet, it's going to take that and run it and validate the output of it. Let's see what happens when we do this. Okay, we get a failure, reverse is not defined. Okay, test room development, we fell first. So let's define reverse. It takes a node. What's it going to do? It's going to swap the two children. So self.l and self.r equals self.r, self.l. A feature of Python where you can swap two variables on the same line. You don't have to have a temporary variable, kind of nice. After we've swapped them, we're going to want to reverse on the left-hand side and we're going to want to reverse on the right-hand side. Okay, let's run this and see what happens. We get an error, self is not defined, so it looks like in here I'm saying self instead of n, so. Okay, let's try it again, okay. It looks like it's going a little further, and now it's getting an attribute error. None type has no attribute R. So apparently, as it's recursing down, it looks like it's gone down and it's tried to reverse the left-hand side, 
and apparently there's no right hand side for the first for this node so we need to have a terminating case here and what we can do is say if n is none if we don't have a node we'll just return let's try that okay silence in this case silence is golden it's not really telling us much because we're not looking at the output. We're calling reverse, but we're not looking at the output of it. So we should look at n. We should look at n dot l, which was two, but should now be none. And n dot r should now be two. And n dot r dot l should now be three, I believe. Let's run this and see what happens. Okay we're getting a bunch of failures. So it said n came in as input and I got this guy, some node as output. The way to get rid of that or fix that is to provide a dunder repr method here. So if we define dunder repr, this is an implicit representation of a node and we're just going to do something simple we'll just return self.val here let's run again and see what we get okay so we get a failure n it says we expected nothing the doc test didn't provide anything but we got one and dot r got two and dot r dot l got three so we can come in here and we can fix our tests so this got one so we just put one in here this was two and this was two, this one was none. And so if there's a none, an implicit print, so if we don't put print here, it's this, it calls repr, dunder repr. And if there's a none, it doesn't print it. If we put a, explicitly put a print here, then it will print the dunder stir method. Let's just make this work. Okay, we have no errors here. We can. Just for fun, we'll come in here and say print this. It's gonna fail. It says I got none. So we can do that and run it again. Okay, it looks like we're good. If I wanted to be thorough about this, I could make a virtual environment here. And so virtual environment, if you're not familiar with it, is a basically a sandbox for Python to install things that are isolated from other things on your system. I'm going to activate that and that basically, if you can see my path here, it's updated my path. We'll talk more about virtual environments in another episode. And I'm going to install a tool called coverage. This coverage will let me measure line coverage. I use this tool called pip to install it. It thinks for a minute, it downloads it from apparently my slow internet. Very slow tonight. Compiles it and we should now have a coverage binary here. We can say coverage help to get some help. So what we want to do here is we want to perform a command called run that runs a Python program and measures the coverage execution. So this is what we have in here. Our virtual environment created this env directory and we have tree.py. Instead of calling Python, I'm gonna say coverage run tree.py. No output, so it looks like we're golden, but we see that we now have a coverage blob in there. So we can say coverage help. And if we see another command here, it's called report that will tell us our coverage stats. So let's run that. After we have this coverage blob, we can do the report. And indeed it says that we've covered every line of code. We have 100% code coverage. Pretty good for people who like testing. Um, if you're in an interview situation, you might want to think about corner cases and if you've missed any corner cases or whatnot. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. It's covered a few things. It's covered uh, doc tests here. So again, a doc test, it 
takes what looks like interactive snippets and makes them into tests. It has shown this nice feature of Python where we can swap two variables in the same line, a little bit of recursion, and the dunder repr method. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this screencast, be sure to check out our other screencasts at pycast.io.